Hello and welcome to yet another episode of What would you do if you were a KDE dictator? That is, if you could decide over anything that happens over at KDE, like any choice, any merge request, whether to accept it or not, anything. So this was actually a question that was asked in the subreddit of KDE, because of course I cannot know your answer and do a video about that, but I can know the answers that has already been given. So let's go through them. I'll talk about firstly all the answers that completely missed the question in my opinion, then I'm going to talk about the answers that do address the question, however, that I feel are terrible ideas, and then we go talk about all the ideas that could be actually interesting to apply just in case you were to become a KDA dictator. So we start off with something that in my opinion completely misses the question and that is a giant list of feature requests that are incredibly complex. So we've got a new theming system, which to be clear is not like a bad idea inherently, it's just, you know, super complex. And on top of that we have key parts in plasmoids, also quite complex, Windows tabs, which was a feature but then it was, you know, not ported to the last, latest version of KD Plasma because it was super complex to maintain, there wasn't anybody that was actually able to do that. And then Resurrect Empathy, also incredibly complex. And then Ask Telegram for Founding, that is, I can just tell you that is not going to work. But the, the question is, if you were a KD dictator, what would you like change, like in policies, in how we do things, not I would just do everything that's so complex that people weren't able to do before because, you know, there's a reason we don't have that kind of stuff and it's, it's extremely complex. It takes time and effort. It's not like we haven't even tried. By the way, the list actually goes on <laughs> and talks about making Falcon a top priority with what resources after you've put them to everything else. <laughs> And this is the best. Resurrect Carbon, which de facto is a pretty dead SVG application of KDE, and make it the de facto tool for designing SVGs. <laughs> I don't even know how to address that. Like, do, do you know like the insane amount of work that is needed to take something that is currently used by nobody, let's be honest, and make that the de facto tool for SVG is like the amount of work that would be required is insane. And then there's like do something with aggregator and then also fix SDDM. <laughs> I guess if we are at it, we can just do whatever. <laughs> and by the way, reading from the comments, it seems like this person does not want open source people to rely solely on Mozilla, which makes sense actually. However, this kind of implies that with make Falcon top priority, he means that Falcon should have its own browser engine because the alternative is to have just another browser that uses under the hood the same engine as Chromium, which I don't see how that is like any better than relying on Mozilla, honestly. Like you either rely on Mozilla right now or you rely on Chromium. <laughs> So do you want KDE to do its own browser engine? That, that is somehow even harder. <laughs> okay, so let's just switch to the next one. This person says that he would step down as a dictator. Fair enough, but you really don't get the point of dictatorship. So, so you, you don't just step down. You, you try to, you know, stay in power as long as possible, destroy the project there, rather than give it to anybody else. That's how dictatorship works. They're bad things. So this really, <laughs> I'm just kidding, obviously, but. We also have another feature request, which is bring back uh, tabbed windows again, which again, iner inherently is not a bad feature request. It's that if you become a dictator and you're only, and the only thing you say is, please do that one feature, which is super complex and forget about everything else. like. That's not going to work. <laughs> In here, we are expecting a full dictatorship plan and those are coming. Finally, in this category, we have sent everybody who's not maintaining their widgets into, yeah, this guy gets the vibes of a 
dictatorship. I, I like him. I like him. Let's get into more serious stuff. Uh, that is all the comments that actually answer the question, in my opinion, and that do so in a not so good way. Firstly, we have the request to make a, a full feature phrase, like for everything, until somebody documents Kwin theming code. This is the kind of things that looks like it's going to kill the project. But even said that, I try to actually understand what it means by Kwin theming code, because Kwin itself doesn't do that much theming. I guess he's talking about themes in general, or maybe themes that have something to do with Kwin, such as, you know, doing blur, that kind of stuff. Now, it's not that bad documented as it might seem to say, but maybe I'm missing the point. Like, if you're doing a plasma theme, there are a lot of things that you can say in the plasma theme file to control, you know, uh, the blur, the contrast effect, these kind of things. And also, if you're doing an application, you can do a Q style, and maybe you're doing a window decoration that is a very Kwin esque thing, so maybe it's about that. But all of these things are not that badly documented. Maybe decorations a bit less, but you do have documentation on how to deal with these kind of things. And weirdly enough, he says also make blur native. And that really confuses me because blur is native. Kwin has a function to do blur out of the box, like it's implemented in Kwin. And the cool thing is that we do use it by default for the plasma theme we do have blur out of the box, so I'm really confused here. Maybe he means that we should implement blur out of the box for applications where we usually don't use blur. I guess what's, that's what he's trying to say. I just really got confused here. Then we have the typical request that everybody does, which is a full feature phrase to fix bugs. And uh, I've done an entire video addressing that. It's a bad idea, guys it, it, and girls. Guys and girls, it's a bad idea for a variety of reasons. First of all, you really think that, you know, you use KDE and you're gonna be happy with KDE even if there are no more features and it's just bug fixing. I respect that, but a lot of people don't work this way. If we go for an entire year, which is three releases of KDE without any new feature at all, that is going to get people worried, upset, and uh, they would start spreading, you know, FUD, they would start saying, oh no, is KD dying? You would start to see these clickbaity titles and people would actually find it very hard to be exact excited about KD because take 5.25 as an example. That was a super cool release with a lot of new functions that were actually needed. Like touchpad gestures, we actually need that. A new overview, that was very much needed. A lot of refactorings that brought in new features. If we didn't do any of that, for an entire year, people would stop being excited about KDE and less people would switch to KDE, I can tell you that. And it's not just that, but it wouldn't even work from a technical point of view. You literally cannot just go ahead and say, okay, stop the features. That's not going to work. I know you're a dictator. You can say we're not going to accept features, but people are still going to write new features and not just people inside of KDE that you can control since you're a dictator, but people outside of KDE usually do new features and then send merge requests to KDE. And yes, you can just say, no, we are not going to accept that. But for an entire year, it's going to be very hard to justify it. And at the end, after one year, you're going to get hundreds of merge requests for everything that was supposed to land before that, during that year and that hadn't. So you're going to get a lot of bugs from the very first day you stop this feature freeze. It's not going to work. Okay, so this one, we need to modernize KDE. Okay, uh, no features or even bug fixes. That's quite a feature freeze. <laughs> okay, risky, but let's see. I still might be with you on the updating depths, but then you say migrate everything to Qt quick. Okay, you're... <laughs> You're trying to kill Kitty. <laughs> so, migrating everything to Qt, to Qt Quick would either take years, four or five years, maybe more, or it's in unfeasible. One of the two. 
And if you're telling me that you're not going to accept any feature request or bug fix until everything is ported to Qt Quick, that means that Qt will stay like it is right now, except for the porting, for years to come. That's going to kill the project. That's going to kill all the motivation, all the excitement. That's going to kill everything. No, 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 no. sorry. That's not going to work. Good try, but no. Also update to the latest Qt. Okay, it's easy if you need to switch from 5.12 to 5.15, but if you need to switch from 5 to 6, well, that's also quite a transition that takes months, if not, again, years, so that would just add to the four to five years I already said to port everything to Qt Quick. So tough, very tough. Okay, an interesting idea here, audit the KD store. So I, I thought about it and there are two options. Either you're telling me audit only the new things that are proposed and okay, very hard. You would need to hire somebody to do that full time because lots of things are proposed to the case store, but I guess it could be feasible. But if you're telling me, let's audit everything on the KD store, everything that is currently on the KD store, <laughs> that's not going to happen. Like that would require an insane amount of work. Like again, we're talking years. So no, that's not going to happen. I guess we could talk about it if it's just for new things, but that kind of defeats the point. Like, if you only have the new stuff audited, certified, and then the old stuff, you know, it's still there and it's not certified. I guess you could start certifying from the most downloaded stuff to the least downloaded stuff, but I guess you could create a complex system where some, the things that get audited gets like a badge and says this is verified. We could talk about that, but you really, <laughs> we really need to work on this proposal because as it is now, uh, yeah, it needs work. This one is interesting. Give a raise to all KDE developers. Now, of course, I'm not inherently against this, even though I'm not a KDE developer. Keep in mind that KDE developer usually aren't hired by KDE. Right now, I don't think there's any KD, maybe one KD developer hired by KD. There are some employees, but those most uh, they mostly work on like promotion, documentation, legal stuff. But yeah, still, it makes sense to give them a raise. Now, here's the thing: KD doesn't have like that much money, so if giving a raise would mean either, you know, you would have to cut costs somewhere. So you either fire somebody or you stop offering services like stop paying tickets for people who attend like uh, developer sprints. And that would be a real pity because it's very useful for the KDE EV to be able to pay uh, expenses to actually make developers go into places to talk to other developers. That's extremely useful. So, uh, okay, but how? Yes, let's pay more developers. How? <laughs> Integrate latte features to the plasma panels. <laughs> so I've worked a lot on the plasma panels. I think I'm the person that currently does most work regarding the panel, maybe. And please don't, <laughs> please don't make me do this. <laughs> that would honestly be horrible for various reasons. Firstly, there is LatteDoc. LatteDoc is actually not dead. And uh, even, you know, if, if, even if it was, it would be easier to just maintain LatteDoc instead of porting everything from LatteDoc to Plasma Panels. That would be so much easier. It's so much work to re-implement everything with a different idea in mind. It's not just like you can copy paste. You have to actually put in the work to redo the stuff. And it's already LatteDoc. Just pay somebody to work on LatteDoc at this point, please. Don't make the plasma panels terribly complex because they are supposed to be simple. Like users start off uh, their OS. Maybe they don't know about plasma so much yet. They, they try to see what they can customize. They shouldn't be greeted with something that is as complex as LatteDoc, which really is meant for power users who know how to set up an app like LatteDoc. So please, please don't, don't, please. 
We have yet another feature freeze request and this one also comes with the idea of clean up Bugzilla. So yes, it's true that we have bugs since KD4, but here's the thing. Lots of those bugs, most of those bugs are still open. Like they are still valid bug reports. You cannot just clean them out. You would have to actually fix them. And usually if you have a bug report that hasn't been fixed since KD4, it's because, hear me out, it's super complex to fix and nobody has the time or skills to do that. So yes, you could say me, okay, let's clean up Bugzilla by, you know, actually fixing bugs because that's really the only way to clean up Bugzilla a lot. And at this point I would ask you how, because we are already trying to do that. We are already very much focused on fixing bugs. We are trying, so, what should we change actually to clean up Bugzilla from the bugs? Do you have like proposals? It's a bit too vague to just say, you know, solve all the bugs. Just do that. Go ahead. <laughs> How? <laughs> also, some of the things here don't make any sense at, so at all. Say, so like switching from patchwork to real bug fixing with testing. I could do an entire video about testing if you want to, but <laughs> saying that we should switch from doing patchwork to real bug fixing. How do I say this? This sounds like an insult. <laughs> You're just doing patchwork instead of trying actually to fix stuff. No, no, we are actually trying to do real bug fixing with the testing. It's just that, you know, things are complex and it's easy to say, okay, let's test like, I don't know, a framework. We have tests for frameworks, but if you have to test, I don't know, an entire desktop, which is UI, then you have, to have, you have to have some sort of program that finds the element automatically, clicks on them, checks to see like if you have a reference screenshot, then you take a screenshot, you compare the screenshot to the reference, that sort of stuff. It's super complex tooling to create, to maintain. We kind of have some of that thanks to OpenSUSE. There's some KD testing done like this, but <laughs> it also says that KD is following an Agile, Agile, I don't know how it's pronounced, methodology with one week sprints. Uh, <laughs> no, 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 most of the work done in KDE is not done in sprints, as far as I'm aware. Like the vast majority of things I see are implemented by developers in their own room and then we chat on like chats and merge requests. There's no clear like sprints and stuff. And when they are, they are a bit rarer about something very specific. And I don't know what else to say because I've actually never been in a sprint. I never had this chance. I was at the academy, but never at a sprint. So I'm not sold on this. Redesign everything. Again, people, yes, you're a dictator, fine. You're not omni omnipotent, that's in English. You cannot just do anything and it magically happens. Redesign everything, going from icons to everything. Do you know how much work that is? Do you know how many years, like... <laughs> I think people sometimes very much underestimate the amount of work that something as big as a desktop is, like, takes. To redesign everything, I, I, I mean, I don't know, give me a plan. How would you even address this? I have no idea. If somebody made me the kiddie dictator, at the sole request that I find a way to redesign everything, the, the <laughs> I'd panic, I don't know. <laughs> this one is just beautiful. We could, <laughs> sorry, I'm just laughing too much. We could, hear me out, create a new version of KDE, taking off half of the options, like half of them, like that. And by doing that, I guess, reaching 50% more stability, <laughs> which, <laughs> How raises a lot of questions, like first of all, how do you measure stability and also do you really think that just by taking off options you'll get 50% more stability? That's not how it works, believe me. And then just let people vote for which version they prefer. This sounds, I'm gonna tell you, like a plot of an anime. You know those animes you watch online that have some crazy plots that sounds like super cool and you would like, you're like, this would never actually work, but it sounds so cool. Like I would so much want to try this. Just let's do KD Plasma Lite and we take off 
half of the features. Like we have half of the stuff, boom. And then we just release it and say, okay, now let's do a vote. I have no idea how, because we have to make sure, you know, that it's fair. Each person can only vote one time. That would be kind of complex, but whatever. Let's just do a vote. And then we decide which version of Kitty Plasma to kill. That's, that's so much an anime. I'm gonna watch that. And finally, we just cannot avoid the, let's just revert everything that has been done after Kitty 3. I mean, I mean sure, sure. <laughs> that's also an anime that I would watch, like watch the lives of the Kitty developers who spent years and years implementing stuff watch all of their work be thrown away after this guy becomes a dictator and reverts I, I would watch that. I would watch that. Okay, so congratulations, you actually made it to the interesting part of the video, which is the good ideas that I found in this thread. That was quite a task, I think it's already been like 22 minutes, but we got there. Here are the good ideas. So first of all, an overview that includes activities. Okay, a bit of a future request, but it's not a bad idea and uh, we can do that. And in fact, if you see mockups for the overview, usually you do have activities as well there. And I I'm with you, let's do this. Of course, it takes time and skill to actually implement this, which is why it hasn't been done before, but sure. If you're a dictator, you can just go to a KD Plasma developer who's doing something else and, you know, make him implement this. I'm I'm fine, let's do this. More full-time stuff with a clear plan, designers and documentations. This comment is very interesting, covers a lot of stuff. It's very risky and not sold 100%, but it's not a bad proposal. Like we, we could think about it, like we could discuss it at least. Then there is improving Baloo, which I thought was a bit of a weird pick. Like you have the whole KDE and as a dictator, you choose to focus on Kitty, on Baloo, but it's actually well written, like the comment, you can see the reasoning with, behind it. And I mean, why not? Uh, Baloo does have some issues. I don't fully agree with the idea of exposing too much to the user this, like Baloo should kind of be a implementation detail, but it's a good idea nonetheless. Touch screen support was actually a goal Touch screen support was actually proposed as a goal, which was pretty cool, sadly it didn't get voted. Nonetheless, we saw a lot of improvements in the latest years, which is so cool, so that was very nice. But yeah, I'm, I totally agree. I do think that KD Plasma should improve in its uh, touch screen capabilities. Of course, the question is at the expenses of what? Because we have a limited amount of time to spend developing. Also, um, nice idea with a beer. <laughs> Sure, why not? More effort into advertising existing features to let people know that those exist. This is basically, I think, taken from the video from Nick, uh, on which I also did a video. And I mean, it's not a bad idea. Like we could totally do that. We probably should, of course, again, it takes time. So you would have to sacrifice something else to do this. But if you are a dictator, I, I would be with you in this idea, yeah. Simplify the project by dropping features and apps. Super controversial as soon as you start saying what those features and apps are, because it's very easy to say, let's remove some features and apps because people that hear you always think, ah, yes, those features and apps I don't use. And then when you actually start saying which features and apps, people would realize, oh wait, I use that. And they get angry, but, but yeah, I mean, I'm not necessarily against it at all, actually. So yeah, you gotta be more specific. You gotta list what features and what apps, and then that will start a conversation, a very heated one, but sure, sure, why not? A web browser that does uh, everything, like the description covers everything, and that honestly was just Conqueror. Do you know about Conqueror? It did basically everything, not what you're asking for, but you're asking for like a more modern version of Conqueror. And um, I don't know how to pronounce Conqueror, so sorry about that, but I'm with you. Like um, I liked the idea I never used it a lot, but you know, it, it's kind of dead at this point. So yeah, I mean, you know, why not? Why not? Of course it's a lot of work, but it's, I would say within the realm of possible. 
I think that out of the box is more blurry and transparent. You know what, I'm with you. I don't have anything to say. I actually am a big fan of blurry transparent themes. And in fact, I have done merge requests to make the default Kitty Plasma theme more blurry and transparent. So you can thank me, you can, I would make you a happy dictator, but you know, I'm, I'm not like, <laughs> there are other developers who disagree, so you know. And also there are a lot of technical details to address if we want to do this, but we could like sort them out. Refactor all the shortcuts. Yes, I'm with you actually. Uh, yeah, I totally agree that a lot of shortcuts on KDE by default are incorrect, in my opinion. As an example, the one that makes me most upset is MetaTab. If you press MetaTab, that's gonna be the activity switcher. And hear me out, MetaTab is actually a super important shortcut. And usually if you take like Windows as an example, MetaTab that opens up Act, uh, how do they call it? the virtual desktops view? I don't know, like open applications. That's very useful because it's a very important shortcut and they give it a very important meaning. Activity switcher, on the other hand, not that many people use the activity switcher. Basically anybody nowadays. <laughs> so I, I would say that it would be fine if we made the activity switcher something less important, like, I don't know, meta shift tab. And let's keep MetaTab for something important. That's my take. But he also has some proposals like switching um, KRunner to MetaSpace and then the spotlight inside of applications applications to control space. That's a very good idea. I'm, I'm with you. It's a very well-written proposal. Why not? Make KDE ready for enterprise usage with stuff like being able to uh, lock down certain components. This is kind of what Kiosk was meant to address, but not many know about Kiosk. I've never actually used it. I think it's not very well documented. I could be wrong though. And in general, I do agree. These are very good proposals and things that would actually improve KDE for enterprise usage, which is probably important. So yeah, good one. Last one. Having an official layout that mimic other platforms. This was actually proposed uh, by Nate. It turned out to be a bit controversial, so it was shut down eventually, but it, it was a proposal. I don't see honestly why it shouldn't be accepted at all. You know, all of these are good proposals, not necessarily something that I would implement immediately, but something that we could discuss and that we could make something very useful out of it. The, the previous ones, <laughs> In my opinion, of course, I'm just one person, but not so much. Now, of course, at the end, this is just a mindless third experiment. There's not such thing as a KDE dictator. There, you cannot have KDE dictator, thankfully. That would be terrible. But you know, it's still a good idea to discuss between users and developers what should be the future of KDE, really. Because what we're actually talking about is what should KDE do to make their users happier and some of the things are reasonable requests that we can act on. Some of them are not, and we can try to explain why. Okay, I was a bit too aggressive in this video, but nonetheless, you can get the idea of why I do think that some of the things are not feasible. So that is the actual meaning to all of this. So thanks for following. And by the way, you can donate to me because I'm, again, I'm not hired by KDE. And if you want to make KDE better then maybe one thing is become a dictator and give me money. I don't know. I don't know. You can donate to me. I'll just say that. Thanks everybody for following and um, see you in a couple of days, I guess.